Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're gonna have a look at the humble door on your Jayco camper trailer. We'll run through some things to look out for, some maintenance tips and tricks, including improvements you can make to these door latches to make your life easier. Come along and we'll show you how. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to show you something I discovered very recently along the way, and that relates to security. I think most of us are aware that these camper trailers aren't the most secure thing in the world. However, if you've got one of these Fiamma handrails that come out like this, they also double as a security device for these particular doors. Because what you do, is you release it and pop it up against the door when it's in the open position or even when it's closed like this and you can securely lock this bar over the door so it can't be open. So there's a little tip and trick and these Fiamma items are actually marketed as a secure device for the doors themselves, not necessarily the grab handle that most people use them for. Now one of the first tips for when you're packing away is you'll notice on the top of the door there's this lip. When you shut the door, you want to make sure that when you close the roof and lock it down, that the upper lip of the extrusion clips over that lip to hold the door in place. Now you can see on our door, there's been a little bit of rubbing here. That isn't necessarily a good thing because what that does is it also puts pressure on these hinges while you're in transit. So pay particular attention to how your van is sitting while you're in transit and for any of these wear marks and then make any necessary adjustments when you're packing down to try to alleviate those and take the stress points out of these doors when you're traveling. For us, that might be as simple as just adjusting these hinges so they don't pull the roof down quite so tight onto the door itself. Now, it's a bit of a balancing act because you also wanna make sure that this seal is down far enough so you don't get water ingress into your camper trailer while you're in transit as well. The second important thing is to make sure your van is nice and level, particularly from side to side when you're setting up. We covered this in our setup tips and tricks video. However, it's generally a case of reversing the van up onto some leveling ramps or something that will get it level from side to side and then using the jockey wheel to level the van from front to rear. With the camper up, it's a good idea to shut the door first. And then you have the door secured to the roof via the turnbuckles. Now, one thing to note is you can get some upgraded parts for these to make them a little bit more stable on the roof. We've never had any problems. However, a fellow member of the Jayco Camper Trailer Group has been making these, which secure a lot better onto the roof. You'll also note that there's a plastic sheet that's provided with the camper trailers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go on the underside. I'll be honest, we don't actually use ours, but I've put it on just for this video. I did have to go and find where we stashed it away. But the idea of this is this will protect the door from rubbing on anything you might have on your bedding once it's all packed down so that it's protecting the door. It also stops it to a degree from hanging down. On the opposite side of the door, there are also two turnbuckles and I do find that they do come loose typically while you're in transit. So you shouldn't rely entirely on those to hold the door within the frame up against the roof. What a lot of people do, however, is they'll loop a Noki strap around and that'll keep the door all nice and secure, tied up onto the roof and to make sure it doesn't flop and hang down while in transit and while you're raising the roof of the camper trailer. So in setting up, it's a simple case of releasing those turnbuckles, lowering the door, pulling any plastics or Oki straps off, and then securely putting it into place. Two important things are making sure that the nubs of the frame are sitting securely into the holes on either side. You then wanna make sure that the clamp between the two door panels is secured into place. And most importantly, you wanna make sure that you pop 
the top of the door back in and turn these turnbuckles around to lock this metal part into the top of the door like so. If you struggle to pop this part in, it might be a case of having to lift the roof of the van up a little bit more so that this pops in easily and you don't have to use too much force. And then from a setup point of view, it's a simple case of dropping the pelmet down and velcroing in the sides to secure the canvas onto the side of the upper door frame. And now we'll get into some of the tips and tricks and maintenance things to make these doors operate a lot better. And there's a few things to go through, which I'll show you right now. Now, when it comes to going in and out of these doors, a lot of people, including small children, really struggle pushing these buttons in to open the door. Now it's at this point, you wanna make sure the van's all nice and level to start off with. And then there's a few little things you can do to these door mechanisms to make them work a lot better. So let's get into the latching and then I'll go through what needs to happen with the hinges. Now, when it comes to these door latch mechanisms, know you can buy brand new ones from Jayco or Coast to Coast themselves. We updated ours primarily because the plastic had gone all yellowed and I went through and changed all our grab handles vents and bits and pieces when we first bought the van just to make it all nice and fresh that also meant that the mechanism worked a little bit better now one important thing to note with these jaco camper trailers is that there's two different latch mechanisms so when these smooth wall vans came in around 2007 this new door style was introduced so there's a black door latch mechanism that runs up to about 2012. From 2013 onwards, we have the white style one. So if you're looking to order a new door latch mechanism, you need to take note of what age your particular camper trailer is, as they do vary between generations. Now with the door open, you'll see the four mounting screws that attach through the door and secure the outside mechanism onto the internal mechanism. Now I think one thing that actually binds these push buttons in particular up and I'll show you once we get inside and do a modification to this particular latch is that people do up these screws way too tight and what that does is it deforms and pushes the plastic together so that this mechanism can't push in and out freely so the first thing I would do if you've got a sticky mechanism is to loosen these off a little bit and see if that makes any difference to the operation of the mechanism from there, you want to look to lubricating this and we'll go inside to run through that. Now to remove this door latch mechanism, it's a simple case of removing these four screws. They're quite long so they take a while to get out and then the outer and inner mechanism will come apart and we can take it inside and I'll show you how to get these working really, really well so they don't get all sticky and bound up and your kids can go in and out without asking for your help. Leave one of the top screws in just so you can hold it all together and remove the last ones. Then the inside pulls off and to be honest you can leave the outside latch in because we don't need to service this. This is the bit we want so that we can pull it apart, lubricate it up and replace this snib as it's a common failure point. So the big issue with these latches is that these snibs have a tendency to snap off. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, that is a bit of a problem. People come around with some ghetto fixes, putting wood screws and whatnot into the end of them just to try to keep the door closed. However, these are a weak point of the latches and really should be fixed. Now, a few of these snip issues do come about from poor adjustment and the doors getting out of alignment. But the inherent issue is the weakness of this snip in that it's hollow inside and not solid all the way through. A few people have come along with modifications where you fill in the grid on the back of these snibs to make them more solid. However, our good friend Royce from 3D Print RV actually makes these full solid replacement snips that go into your Jayco handle mechanism. And these are the solution that you can retrofit into your standard Jayco latching mechanism to make it last a lot longer. So we're going to do this upgrade right now. It'll only take a few minutes. And while we're in there, we'll lubricate up this mechanism to make sure it works nice and freely. And I'll show you what you should and shouldn't do. Now to service this latching mechanism, you need to remove this metal backing plate off the unit itself. It's fixed in by four Phillips head screws. You simply release these and remove the backing plate off. Be very careful because the latch has this spring in it which I will show you where it goes if, and it will probably pop out. So just expect this spring to pop out of 
the snib itself and it's pretty easy to put all back together so you don't need to stress about that. The other thing to take note is how this push button goes into the back of the unit itself just in case it comes out. And again, I'll show you as we go through, but it has a little wedge on it that pushes this snib in and out of the mechanism itself. Wind the five screws out with a number two size screwdriver, and then you simply remove the screws. And very carefully lift off this backing plate, noting that that spring is inside the snib itself. And here you can see the spring that sits inside this area of the snib. So a lot of people would be tempted just to spray a bit of WD-40 or even some silicon spray into the workings of this mechanism. However, what that tends to do is it's, it attracts and makes dust stick to all the slides inside of here. Because at the end of the day, how this works is by this snib simply sliding around inside the case itself. There's no real lubrication or anything else to make it work. It's simply this little return spring to make it pop back out and that's about it. So if you end up with a lot of dust in here that mixes in with a lubricant, you'll end up with a paste that will bind this up and make it extremely hard to work. So what I suggest is you go down to your local hardware store and get some graphite powder and then you simply just sprinkle a little bit of graphite powder inside of here and that is the key to making this work really quite smoothly and it will solve a lot of the problems with that button inside being really hard to push as well as making sure this isn't fixed into the door too tightly as well. So to pull this snip out, it's quite easy. You simply lift it up, slide it out of the way. We'll sprinkle some graphite powder back inside. You don't want too much or else it's just all gonna fall back outside and make a mess on your hands like what I've got here. And just note that the wedge of the button goes in this way. And here you can see the difference between the two different snibs. The bottom one is the new replacement solid one from 3D Print RV. And the top one is a hollow standard Jayco one that people will sometimes fill with an epoxy or an aryl dye just to make it more solid. However, I think this is the solution to solve all your problems. So we'll simply swap the spring into this end so that it's sitting in just like so. And then to refix this backing plate in, you'll see there's this little nub that hangs down just like so. This sits onto the back of the spring in the end of the snib just like so. Then we lock this little snib onto the end of the spring And with the four screws back in place, I'll just give it a little bit of a shake to remove any excess graphite powder out of it. And now we have a nice smooth moving snip and a solid all the way through, so it's not likely to snap off on one of your trips away. And with it all wiped down, we can install this back onto the door. Just make sure you don't do it up too tight, but now we'll go back out and we'll run through these door hinges. Now, a major weak point are obviously these door hinges. I haven't seen a Jayco camper trailer yet that doesn't have at least the top door hinge a little bit crooked. Now, as I alluded to at the start, that is sometimes due to the roof itself pushing onto this door when the roof is shut and you're in transit. So make sure that there's no rubbing points or pressure points that will force this door down because that's the last thing you want to do. What happens is, these screw fixings do pull out of the internal door frame and they can be a little bit nasty to fix. And to be honest, this failure point where the hinge fixes into the body of the van itself is probably the best thing that you want to happen. The other failure point is that the hinge pins fall out, which isn't a huge drama. However, I would still recommend replacing these hinges, which goes to the first rectification. The third drama, which is not very good at all, is that these hinges will actually break the plastic of the door surround and come out. From that point, you need to either try to do a temporary fix through aryl dieting the plastic back into the door frame because it's actually broken the door leaf frame itself or replace the whole door assembly, which is quite expensive. 
So it's critical that you watch these hinges and make sure that if you see any changes that you start looking around and see what is causing that. Now to replace these hinges or to fix them more securely into the caravan frame itself, there's a bit of a process to happen and I do have plans to do a how-to video on this down the track but not part of this video. But what you essentially do is you remove these four screws that hold the cover piece that forms the frame of the door. You have to cut away a bit of silicon and try to remove this off without breaking it. If you do break it, you can buy a new one from Jayco, so that's not such a big drama. And then you will see how the actual hinges fix into the frame. What a lot of people do is they actually increase the size of the mounting hardware just to make it a lot more secure. And also putting some reinforcement in behind those fixing points so that there's a better grab into the frame itself to stop these twisting and turning around. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's supposed to be just a quick tips and tricks to help you out in identifying any problems and how you might go around to adjusting or fixing them, particularly if you're on the run. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Put a few comments below on any feedback or items that relate to these doors that I might have missed. And stay tuned for the next episode because it's gonna be pretty exciting. Anyhow, I've got to get this back in the shed. So as I always say, get out there, stay safe and have fun. Thanks for watching.